Hey guys, this is Silix, and welcome to my first Logic Pro tutorial. Today I'm going to be sharing with you um, some of my sampling techniques. And uh, as an example, I'll be going through one of my tracks and basically I'll be explaining how I went about making the glitchy sort of uh, synth sounds that uh, play throughout it. Um, so to get things started, um, let's play a small snippet of my track uh, so you guys can hear uh, what I'm talking about. Alright, so to get things started here, um, let's go down. Um, so the first thing I started with here is I just made a few uh, synth tracks and just recorded the melody that was kind of playing in, in my head. Um, so I started off with one here. Uh, let's just go ahead and play this. Um, yeah, and then I just uh, created a couple more. Um, I don't think these are the exact originals that I used. Um, I think I probably got rid of uh, some of the other ones just to save space or whatnot. But I'll just go through anyway and just solo these so you guys can um, hear what I kind of came up with at first. Okay, so the next step I did, uh, once I was happy with the sort of uh, synths that that we're playing. Um, I made sure that I soloed the tracks, just making sure this one's off here. Uh, yeah, so I soloed the um, tracks here, highlighted the regions, and I right clicked and I went to bounce in place. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to create a new audio file with the sounds from all those three synths playing. So I'll just go through and unsolo these and um, eventually um, I ended up with something that sounded like this. Yeah, so you get the idea. Um, so from here, um, I knew ahead of time that I wanted to have a reversed section, or at least a reverse glitchy part through my song. Um, so in order to do that, um, I made sure that I had the original file here first. So the next step um, is to go and hit control, or I guess option, uh, get confused sometimes. Uh, so hit down uh, option, and you want to click and drag and that's going to copy the audio file to something else. So anytime you're working with chopping up audio files, reversing things, uh, you want to make sure to right click on that audio file and go convert to new audio file. Um, I'll do, I usually just put a one on the end here. Um, so yeah, so that's going to save it as a new audio file. So any changes uh, that you would go through and make to this audio file here is not going to affect the um, original file here. So from there, I took the um, the main glitch file, or that will be glitched shortly, um, dragged it down here, and uh, same thing with the other one, only uh, so let's first go ahead and create a new audio file, and we'll save this, I already replaced that, let's throw some more numbers on there, we'll save that. Um, so next thing I did is I went to the wave editor, and this is the audio file that I want to go through and reverse. Um, so you can click into this guy here, and you want to go down to Functions and Reverse. So now you can see that it um, reversed this one file here, so I'll go ahead and play that. I love reversed audio, I just think it sounds so cool. So, um, <clears throat> right, so I took this guy here, dragged him down here, and that's kind of how things happen. So I'll just get rid of these guys for now. Uh, so let's zoom in here. And um, so the next step to go about glitching things out here, and um, I guess in a sense, is you can see that I cut everything up um, really finely here. And this is the main um, track that I was sort of working with. So. The first thing I did with the original file is if you go hit escape and 5, 
that will bring you this little chopping tool here and um, notice how you can click anywhere and it'll just chop things up for you so that's going to take ages if you want to get something like this um, so in Logic Pro um, I love this feature here if you hold down option you'll see the little plus icon right there and uh, just zoom in a little bit more here uh, just so we can get the lines um, is if you hold down option you'll get the plus icon and if you click it'll create equal audio regions uh, for the whole file and you can just go through and um, mute certain parts that you don't want to have um, which is pretty much what I did for this I just went through and just started to mute things and eventually ended up with a rhythm for the melody that I liked um, so that was kind of the first step um, yeah so I did the same thing this is the reverse file here so I did the same thing here and then um, the next thing I did is I went into flex mode and I chose polyphonic um, it just sounded the best there so once I started muting parts cutting parts out and whatnot um, I started to flex things drag them stretch them out um, I also went as far as to let's just get out flex mode for one moment here um, there's a few audio files in here that I don't know which ones they are now but um, I went through and I um, opened up the um, wave editor again I went to factory and I went to the time and pitch machine right here um, I also sped certain parts up 100% and then I slowed them down um, as well so the way that I did that is I went to uh, I went to mode and I chose classic and then um, I went to um, to speed things up 100% I went to 1200 cents because that's how many there is I think in an octave or to speed it up 100% yeah so then that's going to increase the speed by 100% so um, after that you hit process and paste and then you're going to get um, just a quicker audio file um, and I think even on those quicker ones that I took I went back into flex mode and stretched them out chopped them up even more just kind of had fun with it it was just a big um, experiment okay so after all that said and done just get out of flex mode here um, I ended up with something that sounded um, that sounded like this uh, yeah so um, take your time with this guys because this probably took me three to four hours to get a glitchy little part that I was happy with I mean really really zooming in and getting really small snippets um, throwing parts of the reverse part in you know just moving things around and just having fun pretty much just experiment go wild and eventually if you take your time with it um, you'll get something that sounds pretty good um, one thing to note is that you can see all these uh, white lines on here um, I just selected the whole lot and on the left side here I faded them in uh, by two milliseconds and also out by two milliseconds so that every time a new um, one of these audio uh, clips plays that you're not going to get a click or a popping sound um, so that's pretty much how I went about um, glitching this file and at first you can see that I actually took all this and bounced it as um, a separate audio file just drag this guy over for a second and I'll play that but I wasn't happy with this um, I was like you know what I can probably do a little bit more with this so I'm gonna open up now um, a final mix version of my song and I'll show you guys exactly what I did to further make things sound a little bit more interesting uh, so here we go um, right okay so you can see now that here's the glitch main track right here and you can see that I went down and I created five more um, tracks and I wanted some really cool interesting effects on her so on this one I threw a chorus uh, filter ring shift uh, bit crusher sample delay and some reverb and uh, yeah just kind of chose things that random really and then just kind of if if they didn't work then I would change it to uh, something else so uh, so basically you can see all I did was um, go through the main glitch file right here and I just started 
pulling them down into these other tracks here with the filter, with the ring shifter, and eventually had something that just added a little bit more, um, I guess, um, interest to them. So I'll go ahead and play this now. Uh, just make sure that the glitch uh, part sample, yeah. So, I mean, it sounds pretty much the same, but it's really, really subtle because you're only hearing these effects on really small, small parts. But in this case, subtlety was the key to just making it a little more interesting. And you can apply this to pretty much everything, whether it's layering different drum samples and having different effects in certain tracks, or maybe on a lead synth part, you break up uh, some of your notes and put them on different tracks with different effects. So, you know, just use your imagination and have fun. Anyway, last thing to note is that I took all these um, tracks here and I sent them to bus five, which is called the glitch bus down here. I threw a compressor and uh, did some EQ work on this as well, just to kind of gel all the sounds together, make them sound like they're all nice and happy at home kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how I went about um, sampling here. I'll just go ahead and uh, play um, a snippet from the final part here so you guys can uh, just see how everything sounds like. There you have it. Um, so I guess that's how I go about sampling. So I hope this video was helpful and that you learned a thing or two in the process. Um, if you guys would like to subscribe, uh, I'd love the support and it would mean a lot to me. Um, also, I do plan on doing more tutorials in the future, uh, so keep an eye out for those as well. Alright guys, thanks for watching.